I'm here with uh, Stefan Ullmann from uh, yeah, Astro Sweden and the pro, st pro team staffer from uh, Pulsar yeah. and a shooting instructor and uh, he's going to help me sighting in the GTX uh, C50. Uh, it's quite easy, isn't it? Oh yeah. So it's just, uh, like the one shot zero really works really, really well. Um, but again, I mean, I always think you should do when you're confirming the zero, you should do a three shot string anyways and shoot in cold bore. So wait a couple of minutes before uh, between each shot to make sure the barrel is cold. Yeah. And that's just to make sure that nothing isn't, you know, moving about and so on. Because sometimes it happens that people shoot one shot, uh, they hit, uh, they, do, they do an adjustment for the point of impact. Um, and then they shoot another one and it's dead on. But something is loose and if you would have shot a second or a third one, you, you would know, and then the uh, group opens up. Yeah. So, uh, right. yeah, the one shot zero works very well uh, as long as you don't know what you're doing. It's dead simple when you've learned it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, when we confirm it, we do a couple of shots and just make sure it's bang on. Yeah. Cool. And for this, we are using uh, the Hornady. Yeah. Uh, Precision Hunter, which I think is a really good bullet uh, yeah. for what we are doing. Um, but we, I start actually with you know the cheap ones. Yeah, uh, yeah, smart. Just to be, just <laughs> yeah, exactly, just to be on on, uh, on paper. Yeah. Uh, see if it uh, hits at all. Um, mm. What has happened here, and always when you think uh, are, are um, sighting in, you first of all you have to be sure that it's mounted correctly, right? Yeah. Uh, there's nothing loose. No. Uh, and you know everything from the rifle and up is is you know. Yeah, squared up and lined up. Yeah. I, I, I usually like when I talk to people, I, I say it's kind of like building a pyramid. Okay. You need yeah. the foundation strong, otherwise it's going to fall. Okay. And it's kind of like the same thing with the rifle. If the mounts, like, if the Picatinny or whatever mount you have connected to the rifle mm. isn't secured properly, mm. and it doesn't matter if the scope is secured properly in the rings, it's still going to move about. And that's usually like in nine cases out of ten when I find people having problems with a zero. Yeah. That's where it is. Mm. It's usually not the rings. They, they usually mount them pretty good. Mm. But having a heavy scope on a rifle and not securing the mount, the basis mm. uh, properly mm. is uh, usually the, uh, the thief. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and for doing this, we have, of course, we have uh, the rifle, which is a uh, Mauser M12. Um, and then we have the C50. And when we have this yeah, thing? Yeah, it's a spotting scope from a sight mark called Latitude. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I like it. It's very good glass and it's not that expensive. Like most spotting scopes are really expensive, you know, if you're looking at the high end, high -end mm. ones. Mm. And this one's been good enough. I've been doing, you know, the 1,000 meters with it and it produces a very clear, sharp image, uh, very little um, color distortions or whatever it's called. Oh. Yeah, I like it. I really do. Okay, that's uh, that's really good. Uh, yeah. I took a look at it, and it's really, really clear and really good. Yeah. Uh, the range is uh, calculated with this. Thing. Yeah, with the delta. With the delta, yeah. Yeah. So this is delta RF HD. Yeah. Uh, it's a nine times, well, a nine uh, magnification with uh, forty-five millimeter lenses, okay. and it's fluoric glass, so you get you know minimal color distortion. It's very, very clear. So you got the same. Uh, glass quality as you find some really high-end optics okay. and it's dirt cheap <laughs> for, for that quality it's uh, 14,000 Swedish which is what uh, 1,400 euro ish yeah. it's, it's, it's a wonderful little uh, binocular uh, yeah. yeah and it has a, a laser range yeah as well. out to two, two kilometers plus one is one, uh, one meters okay that's and it's good. got a really fast ping in it as well yeah. so it's, it's really easy to use yeah yeah and we have calculated the, the range here and yeah. how far have we... 60-ish, like I think it's 59 instead. Yeah. yeah. And that's really good for yeah. wide bore. Yeah, it's a decent, yeah, I mean, you saw yesterday, we got really, really close. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, in all honesty, like uh, this time of year, um, when you go out, the pigs are so into eating that they won't take notice of you. Mm. Um, so the only things you have to watch out for is uh, the... <laughs> the nature's guard dogs roe deer and fallow because they are very intuitive with their surroundings but pigs yeah. when they start feeding they don't really care oh. 
so you can get really really close you can take some really really uh safe shots and you know ethical good one shot nah. without any st you know any uh apparent risks or injuries or anything okay mm. so uh then let's yeah then that's about it uh, i'll just put in the bullets and yep. then i will film as well from this one um seeing what we are doing mm. and i'll put on the record and now we are going into the menu and the menu for that is let's see put on And the menu is on the left side, you just hold that in. Yeah. And we go into the reticle and zeroing. Oh. And we choose A because that's the rifle I'm using. And Yeah, again, yeah, I mean you can use the profile for so many things. It could be you got five profiles with ten different distances. Yeah. I mean, it could be one rifle with 50 different ammunitions. It could be 50 rifles with one zero, uh, you know, uh, a certain range. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, whatever you choose. Okay. So, I mean, you can use those profile for so many different reasons. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, if you have mounts, there are, um, what's the word, um, compatible between mm. different rifles and mm. yeah then you can use it okay in that way. that's cool and now i am zooming in as well yeah. uh, going into 14 yeah in the zoom and let's see if i can see that so now i'm gonna take a shot yeah all right Taking the okay, and we are moving all around. Let's see here. So your point of aim is a black dot yep. on top of those in the middle of those three texts. Yep. All right. I'm moving a little bit around because well. Yeah. My heartbeat is going in there. Yeah, try to put a little bit of weight forward, lean into the tripod, push it down. Yeah. And before you're, re well, when you're ready to shoot, yep. take a deep breath. Yeah. Exhale. Yeah. Hold your breath when you're about half long. Okay. And then a slow, steady, steady squeeze and try to keep your knuckle away from the pistol grip. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. I'll take a deep breath. All right, uh, you're about, say, one mil to the left and two mils high. Can you see it? Okay, yeah, yeah. You can see it. Yeah. So now I'm going to use the freeze function. And now I can move the vintage. Let's see. It's going nowhere. <laughs> Since I don't have a mill reticle on this thing. Oh, it's uh, very, very, very small. Am I close to my estimation or is, am I way off? <laughs> oh, you, yeah, I think you're very good. <laughs> so, but it's, you know, it's very fine tune. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing as well. When you zoom in on the scope, you change the uh, increments of um, on the clicks. Okay. So if you're in base magnification, the yeah. clicks might be on one scope. It might be two centimeters per click okay. at a hundred. Okay. But when you zoom in, it's going to be a quarter value of that. Okay. So uh -huh. and and that depends on what scope you have. If you have a C C fifty, it's one. Uh, is it's I think it's eleven millimeters per click. Yeah. Um, 
on the XP50, it's about a couple of centimeters. It's different between the different scopes. So that is in the reticle catalog that you can find on the Pulsar website. So you okay. can see exactly what your click values are. Okay. But now I'm pressing the button in. Now I have put the red uh, uh, what cross or X where the, the point of impact was. Yeah. And I'm pressing it down. Now it has moved the point of the radical to yeah. to where I I should be aiming, and now I'm going back into out of the freeze mode. Uh, let's see how I do that. Don't do that because I'm moving things around. Here. <laughs> let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go out of it. Okay, I'm get totally out of everything here. And now I'm getting in there. I'm gonna have a zoom again. I'm gonna zoom in at 14. And slide. And we're going up. So we are ready to take shot number two. Alright. <coughs> I'm on target. And you say something in Swedish, school come. <laughs> Is that what you say? Yeah, yeah. No, well, it depends. Okay. Like usually I just, if I've got some friends with me or uh, helping me to spot or downrange in a berm, just hiding out and so on, yeah. I just usually call out like um, Scott Connor, which is, uh, I'm about to shoot like shot on the way. Okay. Or uh, just Scott, yeah. which is just shot. So yeah. they know that, yeah, I'm about to shoot. Okay. Um, yeah. And I see Scott. Yeah. Well, that's the name of a guy, but yeah. Okay, well, that's right. <laughs> Scott? Yeah, I'm on target. <laughs> I have no observation on that one. Oh, wait, I think. I think I do. I'll just confirm it with a big, big magnification. Yep. yep. That's very good. You are you are one and a half centimeters low, one and a half centimeters to the right. Okay. I would say that is close enough. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We now we go with a hunting ammo and yeah. I mean do it with practice ammo. Don't don't waste it. And don't okay. shoot the barrel warm either because it's just when the barrel heat up the, the uh, barrel hum, hum, harmonics will change. Yeah. And that will uh, either produce um, a new point of impact mm. or it will open up the groups it, it, it's like every rifle is an individual so it's you know you need to learn how your barrel and your rifle works and mm. how sensitive it is to change some some rifles just go for loads of shots before anything happens and okay. some will just shoot one and the second one will be if it's a quick succession will be a couple of centimeters up and to the right or down down to the left it depends you know yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm loading uh, yep. one bullet, and um, let's have a look. See how the, what the barrel feels like. Yeah, it's a little warm, but it should be all right for for this. Okay. It's such a close range, for anyways. Yep. The rifle is loaded. Yeah. On target. School comma. Happy days, you're uh, one centimeter to the right, one centimeter high. Okay. That <laughs> that's <laughs> good enough for, <laughs> that's good enough for, I mean, hunting. Yeah. Mm. So then I'm sighted in. You're pretty much sighted in. We'll wait a couple of minutes and after after we film this, uh, we'll take a couple of shots when the barrel cool down, just to make sure it doesn't have a huge variation. But yeah. yeah, other than that, we should be sighted in, yeah. yeah. So what do you think about the uh, tripod? Oh, it's really, really good. Um, you, you get, I mean, I'm, I'm not holding the rifle. I'm not moving around. I'm, I'm very, it's very easy. It's, it's, you know, locked in. It's not moving at all. There's no danger in anything because, I mean, uh, I was moving a little bit around. There was a, uh, you know, a, 
ammo in the chamber, but it's it's not it's very secure. Oh yeah, it's a very secure way of sighting in. It's very secure of shooting yeah. because it's so easy, um, and uh, it's it's not heavy weight. It's it's quite, quite you know uh, good. Yeah, uh, but it's it's the right weight for getting very good solid uh, ground for, for shooting and sighting in. Um, so it's a pretty pretty amazing thing and. I mean, having two units on the same, yeah. that's absolutely great. I love the thing, especially if, you, if you're if you into filming your stuff and maybe you're a, another pro staffer for another, uh, you know, another brand or whatever you're doing. And the, the benefits with this is you can mount a camera, you can have a laser rangefinder, you can have, uh, I mean, kind of like any equipment you want on it. Mm. You can have a holder for your phone, you know, mm. film mm. yourself, uh, whatever mm. is in front of you. Uh. Uh, you can have your ballistics. There's so many ways you could use this. Yeah. And uh, the grip is called the Reaper Grip. Okay. And that is from Cold Fiagra as well. Uh, They're going to change the brand name now to KJI okay. in Europe. Yeah. yeah. And it was designed by uh, two uh, American SWAT guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty it's, amazing. It's sturdy stuff, and the guys who, who made it, they, they know their shit. Uh, yeah. One last thing. I'm taking the taking the bullet out. We have to uh, save this. Yeah. So we have to go out of out of the menu now, and let's see. And yeah, it's it's actually saved by itself. I didn't yeah. need to do anything. It's just it's ready. Yeah. Okay, that's that's pretty neat. Yeah. I think the C50 and the I think the new Thermion 2 XP50 LRF. Yeah. Has the same function. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're slightly different than the old, the old one. Yeah. But the, I mean, the main difference on that is on the Pro series. Any Thermion that is called Pro mm. has got new hardware and more energy efficiency. So you get about thirty percent more battery life out of them. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, there's a new um, image algorithms. But other than that, it's mm. pretty much the exact same unit. Yeah. 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 But I'm um, really looking forward to shooting with this uh, tonight mm. we're gonna have a look at some boar and um, uh, oh, yeah. saw, saw a lot of boar yesterday and saw a lot of fallow and red and uh, roe deer and everything yeah. was out uh, yesterday and uh, moose yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, i think she i think it was a she she kind of scared me because i wasn't i wasn't pre prepared for her hiding oh. in the bushes a couple of meters away from me uh, okay. uh, 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 uh. But uh, we are uh, having good fun here in Sweden uh, and uh, this fabulous place. And uh, I hope you learned something from from this uh, this video. Uh, and you know, this is how we do it. Uh, and this, of course, this is a lot of gear. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But we are gear freaks, right? Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. It's like we were talking about it. It's so funny when you look to the different you know stereotypes of hunters. If you were to joke about it, yeah. you got the farmer. He's gonna have a pair of Wellingtons on. He's gonna go out. He's gonna have a rifle and. You know, yep. not that much with them. Oh. Uh, maybe a very worn down cap as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then you got the uh, the normal uh, hunters sitting on a driven hunting tower. They might have a flask of coffee, the orange cap, yep. pair of good boots, yep. nice rifle, nice optic, and yep. they're sitting there enjoying the time in nature. Yep. And then you have the stalkers might might have a backpack as a complement and maybe a bit more camouflage. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got the pro staffers yes. to fill up <laughs> two awesome. buses of gear and need a camera crew <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. do their stuff, but we don't have a camera crew, so we yeah. carry everything and enjoy life that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. That's really good. But uh, thank you for you know instructing and telling yeah. me about this, and uh, I think that's a really good good thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thank you. Have a good.